Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Imran and I work for RTCAM. RTCAM provides WordPress solutions to enterprises and today we're going to talk about why progressive web apps for WordPress. Now let me ask you this, what can evolve faster than technology? It can be our expectations. We want everything better, easier and now. However, downloading apps may sometimes take forever and many parts of the world data is expensive and many areas also have poor connectivity. So we really need a next generation of the mobile web that solve these problems. Let's talk about usage trend on mobile web versus mobile app. So what are the benefits of using native apps? Well, they're easy to access from the home screen, they work offline, you can send push notifications to bring the user back, and you can also access the mobile features and sensors. Now, mobile apps have got better capabilities. However, mobile web have got better reach. Approximately 100 visits per month for an average user. Now, can we get both? So if we can combine the capabilities of a mobile app and the reach of the mobile web, we can get something called PWA. Now what are PWA? Well, PWAs are progressive web apps, which are web applications that look and behave as native apps. They progressively enhance the web applications look and feel like native apps. Let's take a look at this one. So as you can see that if you go to Coditech Academy and if you open that in the mobile web browser, it gives you an option to add to home screen. When you click on the add to home screen, it will go ahead and add that application to your home screen and then you'll be able to access that like any other mobile application. As you can see, if you click on this it opens up, there's no address bar, it feels like a native application, which is brilliant. So what's the need of PWA? Well, it's been observed that users hate delays and unreliability on mobile. The level of stress caused by mobile delays is comparable to watching a horror movie. You can get the stress level something like this when your mobile application is slow. It's also been observed that 50% of the smartphone users are more likely to use a company's mobile site when browsing or shopping because they don't want to download an app. And apps take too much phone memory. And that's the number one issue that leads to uninstall those mobile applications. You can see that the cat says, I'm full, sorry, I can't have more. <laughs> Now where an Android application install would at least require three steps, for example, redirection to Play Store, downloading, relaunching the Android app at the top of the funnel, PWA installation is done seamlessly in one click. And it does not take the user away from the current conversion funnel, which is good for business. So PWAs make it easier to come back to the site. Now Google follows a simple rule and that is focus on users and all else will follow. Google says think user first. What are my customers needs? How does PWA provide them? And based on the observations it is found that users prefer experiences that are fire. Not this fire. <laughs> Certainly not this one. But FIRE would actually relate to fast, installable, reliable, and engaging. Let's take a difference between the native apps versus PWA. So for native apps, you need to develop and maintain three separate code bases. However, for PWA, it's just a single code base, which is brilliant. Native apps have high friction of distribution. However, PWA are accessible on Android, iOS, and web and the on variety of browsers. Native apps are less discoverable, however, in PWA content is discoverable and indexed by search engines. 
In native apps, only the app downloaded link can be shared. However, in PWA, direct link of any page or screen can be shared. Native apps are not bookmarkable, however, PWAs are. Native apps update the app through Play Store, while PWAs are always fresh. Native apps have high data usage, however, PWA have large data savings. So based on what we discussed, these are some of the features of PWA. They are progressive, they are responsive, so work across multiple devices, they work offline, both on web as well as on mobile, they're always fresh, the data is always fresh, and they are saved, so one of the key requirements of PWA is that it needs to be on HTTPS. They are discoverable, indexed by Google, uh, they are re-engageable, so you can send push notifications to users and bring them back. They are durable and they are linkable, so you can share those links. Now what does this mean for business? PWAs make good business sense. Now progressive web apps are on a lot of companies' roadmap to modernize their website and adapt to the user's new expectations. They often ask questions to themselves. Does it answer actual customer needs? Does it grow our business? Is it feasible and robust, etc.? So progressive web apps leverage modern web capabilities. So what are the business impact of a fast website? What you can do is that when working on your speed optimizations, start measuring your site speed frequently with appropriate tools and, and metrics to monitor your progress. For example, measure your metrics with Lighthouse, fix clear targets like having good core Web Vitals scores, and incorporate performance budget into your build process. You can isolate the impact of the incremental speed changes and calculate how much extra revenue your work has generated. It will be interesting for you to know that eBay made speed a company objective for 2019. They use techniques like performance budget, critical path optimization, and predictive prefetching. What's exciting is that they concluded that for every 100 milliseconds improvement in search page loading time, add to cart count increased by 0.5%, which is a great thing for a business. Also, Paul Armstrong, the tech lead at PWA at Twitter, did a very thorough documentation uh, in his case study, which is called Twitter Light and High Performance React Progressive Web apps at scale. So I will share the link with you. However, this basically describes the importance of collecting data while tuning your PWA to maximize the performance optimizations. What will be interesting for you to know that Google recently announced that in May 2021, any non-AM content page that meets Google News content policies like core web vitals, page experience signals, etc will be eligible to appear in the mobile top stories feature in the search. And what you should also know that Google will prioritize pages with great page experience as it ranks the results, which means the website having the better core web vitals and page experience is likely to appear higher in the result. So we talked about what are PWAs and what are the benefits it offers, right? And why is it important? Now, what if we had to build PWA? How do we do that? So we can build PWA in, in a few simple steps. First, we can create the web app manifest. So what is web app manifest? Well, it's just a JSON file that contains metadata. It basically tells the browser about your web application and how it should behave when installed on the user's mobile device or desktop. So a valid manifest for Chrome would be manifest.json, same for Opera, Mozilla is manifest.webmanifest, Microsoft is manifest.webmanifest, etc. And this is how it looks like. So, so since this is a JSON file, it will appear in a key value pair. So you have short name, let's say Cody Tech. This will be used for home screen and launcher, etc. for your app. Then you have the name, which is Cody Tech Academy, which is going to be uh, used at the app install prompt. Uh, you can put the information about the icons which will be used for home screen, app launcher, task switcher and splash screen. 
Also, uh, you can pass the start URL for your site, theme color, background color for your app, uh, display information scope like which directory uh, is used for PWA etc and then all you have to do is just tell your browser about your manifest files so just use the link tag and then link it now let's talk about browser support do you think all browsers will support PWA features no right now which browser do you think will be the last to support the PWA features Yes, you're right. It's Internet Explorer. Always the last, isn't it? <laughs> so as you can see that Internet Explorer is not supported. Uh, Edge has a support. Chrome has full support. iOS Safari has partial support and so on and so forth. Now let's talk about service workers. So what are service workers? Well, well service worker is a script that your browser runs in the background separate from your web page. So what does it do? Well, let's say there's a web browser and you have a remote server. Service worker is basically a middleware that intercepts the HTTP request. And then at that point, you can cache the response and then serve the response from the cache itself. So you can do different things. You can have caching strategy, etc. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that more in a moment. All right. So Let's see the life cycle of service workers. So there are different events in the life cycles. First is register. So at the time of register event, we register the service worker. And then at the time of install, we add the files to the cache. And when it's activated, we also delete the previous cache so that the data is never stale. All right. And then we register the service worker. So this is native JavaScript. We have service work. We check if service worker is available in Navigator. Then we go ahead and register it by passing the URL of the service worker file. And then we register it. And then in the next step, we go ahead and add the files to the cache. We go ahead and create a cache version and paths for the file to be cached. So we create a constant with the cache key and we also create another constant which will contain the list of the URLs that needs to be cached. Then at the install event, we listen to the install event and then we go ahead and cache the files and then ensure that any new version of the service worker will take over the page and become active. In the next step, at the time of activate, we go ahead and delete the previous cache. So we listen to the event called activate, and then we go ahead and check if there's any new cache version, we go ahead and delete the previous cache in that case. All right, so this is how it looks like. So if you go to console and if you load your web application, you can see service workers installed, caching file, registered, activated, checking if there's a new cache version, and no new cache version found. All right, if you go to application from inspect element, this is where you'll find information if the service worker is registered. You've got the source, status, and then you can go to manifest, and this is our manifest.json file information. You've got short name, the theme color, uh, background color, icons information, and all of that. Okay, and this is where it talks, this is where it tells you about the cache storage information. All right, so once the service worker is active, it has full control over pages. It can now handle events like fetch, push, and sync, etc. So to understand how it works, let's say, let's take this example. Let's say this is your web browser, and when a network request comes, so the web browser makes an HTTP request. Service worker is going to intercept that request. It's going to say, hey, wait a minute. Before that request goes to the server, I need to do something. I need to check if that request URL is in cache. If it is in cache, then I'm going to serve the response from the cache itself. But if it isn't, then I'm going to make a request to the network, to the server, and I'm going to return the response from the network request. However, this time, 
I'm also going to cache the response so that the next time the request comes in I can serve it from the cache itself. All right so in the next step we fetch the data from the cache so we listen to the fetch event and then we respond with uh, by checking if the requested URL is into cache or not if it is it's going to return the response from the cache otherwise it's going to make a fresh request to the server awesome all right so this is the fetch event this is how the fetch event looks like so you can see that it's fetching the response from these URLs and if you go to the network tab into inspect element this is how the service workers look like the last thing if you would like to have a custom add to home screen you can add that I will share the link for the github repo so you can check out the code I won't be going into the detail of this it's pretty simple alright so now we go to the coditech.com this is our progressive web app we add to home screen as we got the pop-up you can see it's adding to the home screen and then let's go to our home screen there's our application click on it perfect this is the PWA what we're going to do now is we'll go to offline mode and see if it works offline. There you go. Congratulations. This is working offline. We just built a PWA. Perfect. And you can expect a lighthouse score of something like this. Isn't that amazing? Let's clap for ourselves. We just built a PWA. Awesome. This is every developer's dream, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, really. Okay, so so far, so so far we have learned about what are PWAs, what features do they offer, etc. Now, what if I'm not a technical expert, like I'm not a developer? I'm, I'm sure this question would come into your mind that I'm not a developer, right? So I can't build a PWA. How do I convert my existing WordPress website into PWA? Can I do that? How do I do it? Okay, so let's talk about that. So we have certain plugins available in WordPress, free plugins that you can use, which will convert your existing website, WordPress website, into a PWA. These are PWA from Google. You have Super PWA, WordPress Mobile Pack, PWA for WP and AMP, Progressive WordPress, etc. So let's say, so in this example, we're going to so let's say we install and activate Super PWA plugin. This is how your setting screens would look like. Remember we discussed about the manifest.json where you had the application name, the icon information, background color. So basically this is the information used for that file. Most of this information will be pre-filled but if you want to customize it, for example, you like your application name to be different. Um, and you would like to choose a different background color for your PWA, you can do that from here. Okay? All right. So let's say we've activated the Super PWA plugin, but what if I want to send push notifications to my users for my WordPress website? How do I do that? Well, before we jump onto that, there's something interesting I'd like to share with you. Based on the research, it is observed that smartphone users are more likely to purchase from mobile sites that offer relevant recommendations on products. And 85% of the smartphone users say that mobile notifications are useful. So they can get the right recommendations of what they were looking for. So let's see how we can go ahead and send push notifications for our WordPress website. Well, the good news is that there's a free plugin available and that is called OneSignal. All you have to do is just install and activate this plugin, just follow the basic step, like you just need to create the account at OneSignal and then just fill up the basic information like app ID, REST API key, and then you can customize the settings as well. Once you've done that and once you've got your Super PWA installed, and then one signal activated. Uh, the good part is that the Super PWA is compatible with one signal. Once that is set up, then your WordPress website is going to get converted into a PWA. So for example, I activated that. So if I now go to my WordPress website, you can see that 
I get an option for add to home screen and this time I also get option for sending push notification and when I accept these add to home screen and accept to receive push notification it says thank you for subscribing and it is adding this application onto my home screen Now let's go to our home screen. There's our applications. Let's open it. You can see there is no address bar, so it looks and feels like a native app. That's our blog page. Now let's go offline. So I'm going to hit the offline mode, airplane mode. Let's close everything. Let's reopen it and there you go it still works even when you're offline awesome now let's try to see how the push notification works so ideally I would expect that when I publish a new post then a push notification to be sent to the user right let's do that so I'm gonna publish this post this is my WordPress post I hit publish Notice what happens. You get a message on top. There you go. It says successful send to 10 recipient. And on the right hand side, notice on mobile you got a notification. You click on that notification and you straight into this block. Isn't that amazing? It's absolutely brilliant. I mean, I can actually engage my users by sending them push notification. And it's automatically triggering that to all my subscribers when I go ahead and publish the post. Amazing. Perfect. So now let's talk a little more about browser compatibility. So it's compatible with Google Chrome for Android, Mozilla Firefox for Android, Edge for Android, Brave for Android, Samsung Internet. What about iOS? So iOS started supporting PWA from version 11.3. Only some features are supported on iOS, not all. For example, background sync and web push notifications are currently not supported uh, and, and you need to manually press the share icon and then add to home screen for iOS. All right, there are some of the examples I'd like to share for PWA. So you have Coditech.com, which is a PWA. You have Twitter Lite, uh, Instagram, uh, Uber, MUber, Forbes, Flipkart Lite, Smashing Magazine and Pinterest, and there are more as well. At Articam, we build something called WP Decoupled, and this works offline as well. So this is a PWA. So the front end is in React using Next.js, and the back end is in WordPress. So this is a WooCommerce application. As you can see, that it's working offline as well. I have also built an open source Gatsby WooCommerce theme which has the front end in React with Gatsby and back end in WordPress. And as you can see that these are all the categories of the products. You have these products that are available. You have pagination and you can also go offline. So if I turn off the Wi-Fi and if I refresh the page, you can see that it still works. I can also search the products. It still works. I can also search the products, so I can do pennant, and you can see that it's searching offline as well. Yeah. And then you've got add to cart option. So these are your add to cart, you have checkout options, you have the payment gateway available, you have the cart available, and then you also got the uh, Gutenberg support, so you can write blocks, and then it's going to show over here. And as you can see that these are all working offline. So you can add the products to your wish list and when the internet comes back online, you can just order them, which is brilliant. Okay. And you don't need to build an extra code base for mobile application because this is a PWA. And you can actually add to home screen on your mobile and use this as a mobile application, which even works offline. So let's see how that works.
Alright, so I hope you enjoyed the demo and this will give your website a better performance and better user experience. So for references, uh, you want you can go to so for PWA you can go to developers.google.com slash web slash fundamentals. You can check the code for the PWA that we'll, we built on Imran Sayed slash PWA concepts on GitHub. Uh, for WP Decoupled, you can go to rtcam slash WP Decoupled on GitHub. And for the Gatsby WooCommerce theme on Imran Sayed on GitHub as well. If you would like to learn WordPress, you can go to learn.articam.com and it's a pretty extensive source for learning WordPress. You can check it out. If you would like to learn programming for different tech stacks, you can go to coditech.com and then courses and you can learn about Babel, Chrome, CSS, Gatsby, uh, progressive web apps, WordPress and there are many more free courses available. All right, so that's all. Congratulations, everyone. We learned about what are progressive web apps, how to use them, how to develop a PWA, and how to convert your existing WordPress website into a PWA using WordPress plugin. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much. You can follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Imran Sayyad. Thank you very much.